How did the civil rights movement influence the disability rights movement? Charlie Carr, Boston, well, Massachusetts. When I, um, when I had my injury in 1968, um, Martin Luther King and Bobby Kennedy were, had been assassinated within a short period of time uh, apart from each other. And um, I'll be honest with you, uh, I didn't know anything about the civil rights movement. I'm a, a, a city kid from Everett, you know, 14, 13, 12 years old. I didn't even know any black people when I was growing up. I didn't. And um, that's not to say I was prejudiced or anything else. I just didn't know anyone. But what I learned was, when I got to understand Dr. King and the movement, was that the principles that he used which are essentially this, the same principles that Gandhi preached and espoused and practiced, were that um, nonviolent action uh, was the way to make influence and, ch and to influence people and to, and to affect change. And, and, and in large measure, it's, it's very much what Wade Blank and ADAPT adopted and advanced. And that so-called radical wing of the of the disability rights movement today is still as valid and, and, and needed as it was back then. So I, I just learned over time that for such an oppressed minority as people of color to come together around this group of people led by Dr. King and a few others um, and the incredible change that they brought about namely the Civil Rights Act, um, there had to be some generalizability. And I saw it happening in the women's movement, and I believe that there was an absolute pure play in the disability rights movement, and it is. And what do we have to show for it? We have the ADA. So I believe that not only was it the right road to follow, it remains the right road to follow, and the result for us, our Civil Rights Act, was the aid is the ADA